Nutrition. Welcome back, and this is part four, where I count down numbers 30 to 21. Let's kick it off. So in at number 30 is Generic Machines. Um, one of the oldest decks that I've played, and uh, once upon a time this was one of the very best decks that I own. Um, but of course has been power crept in recent years. Um, and I decided to play a generic machine deck like um, back in 2006 and uh, basically play it in a similar way to how Monarchs were played back then. You're running Hydra Jedon and Treeborn Frog, um, which would set up for Tribute Fodder, only instead of Monarchs I would play high level machines as fuck Monarchs. Um, and I had a lot of cool ones in my arsenal, like Cyber Dragon being one of them. I'd also play Ancient Gear Beast, Jinzo, Blowback Dragon, Machine King, and Perfect Machine King. Um, and I wanted an excuse to play Perfect Machine King, really, because this is the favourite card of a dear friend of mine, Brendan, Old Man Sebi, who I mentioned in other videos. Um, yeah, this card is his all-time favourite card, and. Uh, he tried to play a deck based on Perfect Machine King. I decided to play it as one of the boss monsters in my generic machine deck. Um, mainly in his honour, really. Um, it's not easy to bring out, but it is possible to bring it out. Um, I mean, nowadays, um, there's a simple way to do it. Um, discard it to bring out Machine of Fortress, which I'd play much later on, then use Monster Reborn to bring PMK back. Um, and uh, yeah, it was a ton of fun. Um, and I love being able to play Jinzo as well, because uh, it's uh, my favourite machine monster. Um, and yeah, it was great doing a bunch of cool things with it as well. Um, I'd even run some fusion cards, uh, so obviously I would also play um, Cyber Twin Dragon and Cyber N Dragon. I can't remember if I played Chimeratech Fort uh, Over Dragon at first. Like I know I did later on, but um, yeah, I just don't remember. Um, Oh, yeah, and just for extra fun, I also used to play Gyroid, Steamroid, and Steam Gyroid, because why not? Um, a Steam uh, Gyroid by itself would help as, as well, due to its ability to, once per turn, save itself from being destroyed by battle, uh, which helped a lot. And um, I remember taking it to a tournament, the first tournament of 2007, and actually winning it with this deck, um, which was incredible, and it was the first tournament I ever won. Um, yeah, I played against quite a few decks along the way. Um, a light deck that was running as a Borg, uh, Taxman Burn, Dark Magician, um, macro. I don't remember what else I faced. Um, I thought the macro deck would uh, give me a lot of trouble. I mean, it did, but I was able to overcome it. Um, I lost against Taxman Burn in Swiss, but then beat it in the top four. And then I faced Dark Magician twice in a row and beat that um, once in the last round and again in the top eight. Um, it was just kind of awkward for me, it was like, man, I wish I was using my Dark Magician there, because it's more fun playing against Dark Magician if I'm using my own Dark Magician deck. And then I beat that Light deck in the final, even though I lost against that in Swiss. Um, but, yeah, obviously it has been power crept in recent years. 
is, um, and doesn't run that smoothly anymore, but still runs smoothly enough. You know, we can still do a few things. I mean, the addition of the Machina monsters and Battle Fader helped a lot, big time. Um, um, but then, of course, um, in late 2007, I stopped playing because I got a bit bored of it. it was, again, it was a case where it was just a bit too good <laughs> uh, at the time. Um, but, um, yeah, other than that, it, it's still a cool, fun deck all the same, regardless of whatever era I played it in. Uh, number 29, Cyberus. Um, it's a generic Cyberus, um, even though it's partially focused on code talkers. Um, I did get tempted to play them four years ago. Um, yeah, it was a uh, playmaker slash Yusakuza cool character. I like his deck. I like the Code Talkers and Firewall Dragon. I mean, Deco Talk and Firewall Dragon ended up being two out of four of my top ten favorite Link monsters ever. Um, and I just wanted an excuse to play them. Um, now, <laughs> it's funny because at the time I did play both of them in my Dark Magician deck, even though it made no sense to play Firewall because, um, it, well, at the very least back then, um, Dark Magician isn't really designed to bring out Link 4s, but I liked having the option and I just wanted to have Firewall Dragon. Um, but it proved off to be better played um, in a cyber stick. Um, so I built that and um, yeah, it ended up being a lot of fun. Well, a bit tricky at first as um, I still wasn't quite used to the deck when I started out. I had to keep reading my cards over and over again and make up some plays as I go along. Um, which was kind of frustrating for me, to be honest. Um, uh, now, of course, the deck is very easy to play, and um, to be honest, I think it's got a bit too good, um, mainly because of Access Code Talker, and um, I've not been as interested in playing it recently, because I feel like all I seem to ever do is just spam out Code Talker monsters, like Transcode, and X code and then go into access code talk and just win too easily. Um, which I again I feel bad about and it just gets boring doing that and nothing else. I mean I try not to resort to doing that. Um, and because I prefer to do other things, especially do what I originally made the deck for in the first place, which is bring out Decode and Firewall Dragon and have fun with them. Um, of course there are other cool things I can do with my Cyburst deck, like bring out a uh, <coughs> Cyburst Clock Dragon and just attack over an opposing big monster with that, or um, just bring out Power Code Talker and um, just overrun something that I can't run over with anything else, or just uh, go into Avravax and do the same thing and sit behind that, um, uh, which is fun to do, um, but rather annoyingly just too many situations call for Access Code Talker to come out. Um, yeah. Uh, number 28, Evil Heroes, another of my favourite GX archetypes. Um, yeah, the Evil Heroes are just awesome. Um, it's basically the evil upgrades of uh, uh, the Elemental Heroes. Um, although originally not as consistent and um, 
which you know, didn't have a lot of fusions to work with, but what we had was pretty good enough. Uh, I mean, Inferno Wing is just a load of fun to inflict lots of damage to the opponent with. Lightning Golem was, is the best of the ones that require specific materials, just targeting and destroying a monster for free, just like that. Um, of course, for a while, Dark Gyre and Malicious Fiends proved to be the best ones to overwhelm opponents with. Then, of course, Malicious Bane came along along with a way to search for Dark Fusion and Dark Core, which we didn't really have um, before. Um, now, um, obviously Keeper of Dragon Magic and Predaplot Darling Cobra could grab Dark Fusion, but uh, that was it really. There wasn't anything to grab Dark Core until we got a Dusted Gold, but it was just infuriating that for the longest time it was just too expensive and too difficult to get, and uh, and of course, as I've said before, I have opened loads and loads of Legendary Duelist Five Immortal Destiny. Like, I don't even know how many I've opened at this point. It must be between sixty and seventy packs, and I didn't get a single a dusted gold, which is just infuriating. But I did pull two malicious banes at least. Um, <clears throat> and it just hurt my wallet getting a playset of golds and uh, other copies of Bane. Um, and yeah, they were big helps, but um, then they did kind of get a bit boring to play after all, because it felt like all I was doing was just summoning Bane and sitting behind it and just uh, overwhelming the opponent and um, even some would just get stuck behind Bane, um, which, to be fair, it doesn't sound like much fun, <clears throat> like, especially if you don't have a way to get rid of it without destroying it. Um, like, obviously, it is possible. Like, I mean, Bane is powerful, but it's not unbeatable. You know? There are ways to get rid of it still. Um, of course, I would still try and go for the original evil heroes, especially Inferno Wing, but again, too many situations called for Bane to come out. Um, but still, I like evil heroes all the same. Um, it's still worthy of being on this list, and uh, like, of course, Inferno Wing is still my absolute favourite evil hero to play. Um, Number 27, Utopia, my favourite Zexal archetype. Um, it's weird, because uh, I like Kite more than I like Yuma, but I like Utopia more than Galaxy Ice Photon Dragon. It's interesting. Um, yeah, my favourite number in the game. Um, and uh, for a while, it was my favourite Xyz monster. Then it changed to Ebon Illusion Magician, and then it changed to Utopia the Lightning, uh, which is quite funny. Um, and, but yeah, I would gladly play this in uh, basically whatever deck I could that ran level 4s, because um, it's still a go-to rank 4, um, with or without lightning, um, even when Utopia didn't see, uh, stopped seeing play throughout 2014 and 15, and didn't see play again until lightning came along. Um, but of course nowadays it's only ever used to go for lightning, which is a pity really. Um, but, you know, I still wanted to play it anyway because 2500 beat stick and could still block attacks. Um, <clears throat> and then in 2013 I decided to just build a deck based on him. Um, and uh, that proved to be a lot of fun. Um, as well as going for the upgraded forms like Ray, Ray V and Ray Victory. And uh, 
Utopia Rate Victory proved to be a lot of fun to go into, that's for sure. Um, then of course Lightning came along, which uh, ended up being one of the best rank 5s in the game. Um, very easy to make, um, and could help me out of a load of tight spots. Um, uh, provided you have lightning in your extra deck, it solves almost anything, really. Just uh, overcoming monsters unaffected by card effects, like Ultimate Falcon, or even big monsters that can't be targeted or destroyed by card effects. Um, you know, like um, Leo Dancer, Chaos Max, um, Alternative Ultimate Dragon, um, and it could take out a single Cosmo monster. Um, it just and lightning just outright denies the ability to float, uh, which is great. Um, problem is um, in the Cosmo matchup, um, it, it it can only take out one, but not another one, unless I'm able to get um, more materials on lightning. <laughs> Um, and uh, yeah, again, the deck just got better over the years. Even last year, when Utopia gained loads of support, um, both in uh, Lightning Overdrive. Yeah, I think that's it. Lightning Overdrive and Brothers of Legend. Um, um, yeah, it's just an incredible deck now. I feel like it got loads of support because it did mark um, the 10 year anniversary of Zexel. Um, and uh, yeah, the deck's just better than ever and still a lot of fun to play. Um, of course, I know one person in particular doesn't like it when I summon Lightning, um, whether I'm playing it in its own archetype or other decks, but. Um, Sometimes I have to go for lightning. I mean, I try and do other things with the deck. I mean, it, I, well, I say try, but it does do other things. Like, making lightning isn't the only thing I do. Um, yeah, that's great. Number 36, Magnet Warriors. Another Yugi archetype. Um, yeah, Magnet Warriors um, are just so cool and a, and a lot of fun, especially if I make Valkyrian. Um, I even made it years ago, like in the mid 2000s. Um, but it wasn't that easy to play. I had to fill it up uh, the deck with some other things as well, including Mega Rock Dragon. Um, Um, you know, Valkyrian was still pretty easy to bring out, um, like it's, it was an easier boss monster to bring out than others back then, um, and uh, this ended up being uh, one of my two favourite rock monsters in the game, the other one being Cyberjar. Um, yeah, it's very fun and satisfying bringing out a 3-5 beat stick. Um, and then I tried to build the deck again, like in 2015, I think, because why not? Um, we did have Unexpected Die at the time, which would help bring out any of the Magnet Warriors, and Rescue Rabbit. Um, but then, of course, we got the Yugi Structure deck in 2016, which... Uh, basically gave us support that would make it a lot better and it would finally be its own archetype and uh, the stuff from the structure deck just made it so much better like a searcher and the little guys and the big guy their own version of marauding captain and uh, berserkurion which is the magnet warrior version of the dark arm dragon and we would just float for um, Alpha, Beta and Gamma if it 
dies, but that just helps sets up for another one. Um, yeah, it was just great. I didn't bring the fusion, I uh, play the fusion, of course. Um, oh, I forget the name of it, but you know what I mean. It's the fusion of Valkyrian and Berserkirion, because I hate that fucker, because it's a monster that negates it. I don't know why I didn't put it on my list of hated fusions, thinking about it, but I think it's because at the time I kind of forgot that it existed. Um, no. um, when it comes to the deck, I would much rather focus on building up to Valkyrian or Berserkirion and just overwhelming the opponent with them. Um, that's that's just more fun to do than just putting down a card that says you can't play Yu-Gi-Oh! Um. Number 25. Um, I hope I've not been saying these in the 30s. Um, but yeah, we are in the 20s. Um, so yeah, number 25 is Fish. Like, generic Fish. Uh, the comic relief of my decks. Um, fish are just so much fun. Um, and uh, I decided to build the deck way back in 2008. Um, now before, Fish weren't really a thing until we got the support in. Uh, well, the first support really in Phantom Darkness, and it gave us Golden Flying Fish and Super Ancient Deep Sea King Cola Calf. Um, and I looked in someone's trade binder and saw Golden Flying Fish, um, then read what it did and thought, huh, that's kind of cool. And then I just wanted to play a, a fish deck uh, where this would be the main card, if not one of the main cards. And, uh, I remember my old friend Ed saying, are you actually serious? And I'm like, yep. So, I did. Um, it wasn't great, too great to start off with, but it was still fun to play, and that's all that mattered. Although, it was kind of hard to get Cola Can out. Um, and um, it would disappear and appear uh, from time to time. But but I've come back to playing it on and off in recent years, um, where this and Cola Camp would be um, the main cards I'd use. Um, but, um, now there's ways to get Cola Camp out a lot easier and set up for some Synchro plays and Xyz plays, even Link plays. Um, Abyss Keeper was a very welcome addition to the deck, which uh, helped out a lot. Just drop Cola Cant from hand when it's Link summoned and then just go off. Um, and even go as far as making the extra deck boss monster white or a whale, which is just an absolute beast. Um, but I still liked using Golden Firefish as well, just to pop cards the opponent has. Um, and just more fish support would come along every now and then, even White Mirror. Um, now I've only got one copy of it in my fish deck. I mean, I do own three, but it's been a bit hard to play three copies, so I'm just trying to do what I can and fit in, fit in what I can. Um, Anyway, fish depth charges is a great help as well, like the trap card version of Gemini Spark. Um, it's just great. Um, I mean, it's still not a very competitive deck by any means, and uh, again, it is the comic relief, because it's just ridiculous yet funny playing a deck with fish, but it's just entertaining for everyone all around, at least I'd like to think so. Number 24, Crystal Beasts, basically my favourite GX archetype that is not a hero deck. Um, 
yeah. No, Crystal Beasts are so cool and so much fun, and I love the concept around just being able to turn into continuous spells um, if they get destroyed, and then I get a lot of different effects. Um, um, or spell effects, I should say, with the spell and trap support. Um, it's a shame it was a little bit tricky to build the deck at first. But, uh, of all the seven crystal beasts, Sapphire Pegasus was the hardest one to get because its original printing was ultra and ulti. Like, everything else was easy to pick up. Um, though Rainbow Dragon, not so much. So, it just as well that um, Pegasus and Rainbow Dragon became collectible tin promos, which were, made them somewhat easier to get. Um, now they're just very easy to get, since it's been reprinted like a few times now. Um, uh, yeah, you can, uh, Crystal Beasts, so fun. You can do quite a lot of things. Um, just, do some cool things with Ancient City um, and set up for Rainbow Dragon. Of course there are now oh, plenty of other things they could do as well. They've even been given a couple of fusion monsters, one we have already, Rainbow Over Dragon, um, and we're getting another one later on. Um, so it's good you to get a structure deck and uh, a few more support in the next Battles of Legends set. Um, so now I'm debating whether or not to pick up free structure decks um, or just pick up singles. I'm not too sure. I do still want to get a box of Battles of Legend 5 and pick up the Spell and Trap support. Um, uh, um, I mean, yeah, that's really all there is to say about Crystal Beasts. Number 23. Not that. <laughs> Red Dragon Archfiend. Um, another of my favourite 5Ds archetypes. Um, although I'm more of a fan of Yusei, I'm also a fan of Jack Atlas as well. Um, like, I've always liked Red Dragon Archfiend. Um, it's a cool monster, and I like that it got support later on. Um, well, except for Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss, and I hate him. It's the only Red Dragon Archfiend monster that I hate and refuse to play myself. But all the others, I... Well, almost all the others, I gladly will. Um, I don't really like Red Supernova Dragon as well. It's, like, it's a cheap shot banish card, just banishes the field and then comes back, just like Topologic Zero Boros. Um, uh, I'd much rather play the original Red Dragon Archfiend, Scarlight, Hot Red Dragon Archfiend, yeah, just Hot Red Dragon Archfiend, then Bane, Calamity, and of course Red Nova Dragon. Like It's, it's just more fun setting up for level 8 guys. Um, I'd much rather do that. Um, I'm sure that there were times when I played this deck where Abyss would help, but I still refuse to use it. Like, I would much rather lose games with this deck than play a degenerate piece of shit like Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss. Um, but yeah, it's still a lot of fun. Sometimes it wins, sometimes it uh, gets unlucky and loses, which is why I'm always trying to improve it and make the deck better in any way I can. But once it gets going, it's just a lot of fun, just overwhelming the opponent with any form of Red Dragon Arch feed. Um, yeah, that's really all there is to it. Number 22. Generic Warriors. Um, it's to be expected, really, because, like I said earlier, I'm a fan of most warrior decks, including generic ones. And again, just like my machine deck, this deck was once upon a time 
one of my strongest ever decks. Um, like, there were a lot of things I could do to try to combat whatever the opponent has. Um, and uh, every time I'd play it in the Edgeware tournaments, I'd win at least three matches, whereas whenever I'd play it in the Pharaoh's Elite tournaments, I would always at least be able to make top eight. Um, there was one time where I made top four, and another time where I actually won a tournament with this deck, more specifically round two of the Summer Cup Qualifiers 2007. And that was the third tournament I ever won. Um, <clears throat> and uh, it's particularly fun when I bring out any of the high-level warriors I played, including this one, Guildford the Lightning. Originally, my absolute favourite warrior. Like, that was until Shining Flare Wingman came along. But Guildford is just awesome. Um, it was possible to get him out, but... Um, it took some time. Now there's an easier way to do it. <coughs> um, if I'm playing my generic warriors. Uh, so special summon Photon Thrasher um, first, or uh, if I already had a monster on the field, um, activate Photon Sanctuary, special summon two tokens, then tribute all three. Bring out Guild for the Lightning and wipe out the opponent's monsters. It's so fun and satisfying. But of course, there are other things I could do, like bring out um, Silent Swordsman Level 5, Turret Warrior, or a Ryzen Guy, and just um, attack over something. Um, plus, the little guys were very helpful as well, like. Um, uh, the DD Warriors, <coughs> uh, Blade Knight, Wild Heart, uh, Marauding Captain, Exiled Force. Um, yeah, it was just great and uh, could really hold its own against a lot of decks. Um, maybe not so much nowadays because, again, it has been power crept, but uh, regardless, generic warriors are still a lot of fun. And finally, in at number 21, generic spellcasters. As um, I also, uh, as you know, um, spellcasters are another favourite monster type as well. Like, it's hard to pick between warriors and spellcasters. Like, they're both my favourite monster types in the game. Um, which is no surprise because big Dark Magician fan and big Elemental Hero fan. Well, I have played generic spellcasters as well. Um, along with Dark Magician, I wanted to play lots of other cool spellcasters, including this one, Chaos Command Magician, um, and also things like the Tricky, Dark Red Enchanter, um, Break of the Magical Warrior, um, the Spellcaster Synchros. Um, and uh, later on there'd be cards that would help out a lot. Um, I, did I say the Tricky? I think I did. Um, the Tricky and Oracle of the Sun would provide tribute fodder or synchro fodder. Um, and I just used Lights in Sorcerer or Plague Spreader Zombie to make all those synchro plays possible. Um, and. Uh, like even Magical Exemplar was like a one card level six synchro play. Just activate any spell card, then remove two spell counters to special summon Light Send Sorcerer, banish two cards from the opponent's graveyard if I wanted to, then sink a six. Um, I have lots of cool options. Um, Tempest Magician, Explosive Magician, Brianak Goyo Guardian. Um, Iron Chain Dragon. It was great. Um, and even Plague would help me synchro climb as well and make any of my level 8s. Um, um, and it actually proved to be pretty good, or at least um, it definitely was in 2000, 
2010, like maybe it was a bit power crept in later years, but in 2010 it was just amazing. Um, and I remember this being my main deck instead of Prismagician, uh, before going back to Prismagician. Should have stuck with Spellcasters really, since it's better, but um, even though I still played Dark Magician in my generic Spellcaster deck, I wasn't summoning him enough, uh, which was kind of annoying. Um, that's why I went back to Prismagician. Oh yeah, I did also have the option of Chaos Sorcerer as well. Um, the next best thing to Blackluster Soldier Envoy at the beginning, which of course we couldn't play at the time because it was still banned. Um, but now that would be an option if I was still playing that deck today. And um, yeah, that's it for this section. Um, hope you enjoyed. Stay tuned for part 5 and I'll count down 20 to 11. See you soon. Thank you very much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to the Dark Magician YouTube channel.